that would be unconstitutional because the Constitution, Article 6, specifically provides that no religious test shall ever be required. I think the 14th and 19th Amendments also extend that to no racial or gender tests. Nobody should ever be excluded because they don't fit a racial or gender criteria. There are enormous numbers of qualified black judges and professors who would make great appointees to the Supreme Court. Well, that was legal scholar Alan Dershowitz with me last weekend, right here on this program, calling Joe Biden's criteria for a Supreme Court justice unconstitutional. Biden, who has vowed to nominate a black woman as Justice Stephen Breyer's replacement, will reportedly announce his pick by the end of the month. Joining me right now is Senator Ted Cruz. He sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, which will get Biden's nominee first before running for office. He was a Supreme Court litigator and clerked for former Chief Justice William Rehnquist. Senator, good to have you with us this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, Maria. Good to be with you. What are you expecting out of President Biden for his SCOTUS pick? Well, let me say at the outset, the, the fact that he chose to put out this racial quota, it is wrong. It is wrong to discriminate based on race. If you or I tried to do what Joe Biden has done, if your show put up an ad in the paper uh, that, 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 that uh, your morning show is looking for a producer and only black women are eligible to apply, or for that matter, you put up an ad that said only white men are eligible to apply, or you put up an ad that said only Native American women are eligible to apply. Any of those ads would be illegal. They would violate the federal civil rights law, and you or I would face liability. And yet, Joe Biden, those laws don't technically apply to the president in this appointment, but he is certainly violating the spirit of non-discrimination. If he wanted to search for qualified applicants and find who he thought was the most qualified nominee and she happened to be an African-American woman, that's wonderful. But he's not doing that. He wants to discriminate based on race. And Maria, it's also worth noting there's some irony to this because Joe Biden broke a threshold because Joe Biden not once but twice has actually filibustered a black woman to try to stop her from becoming a federal judge. That was Janice Rogers Brown. George W. Bush nominated her to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. And Joe Biden, along with Chuck Schumer, along with Dick Durbin, they filibustered her. They tried to block her from becoming a judge, not because she was a black woman, but because, God forbid, she actually believed in the Constitution and would follow the terms of the Constitution. What Biden wow. really wants here is a left-wing ideologue, and, but he also wants to discriminate based on race because the modern Democratic Party supports quotas and they support racial discrimination. Wow, you make a lot of really good points, Senator. So do you think he's going to nominate an activist, and are you a no vote? Well, I have to see who the nominee is before I decide who to vote, but, but I will say this. If, if Biden nominates a judge in the same mold, uh, as the nominees he's put forward for this past year. Y you know, it's been stunning. I sit on the Judiciary Committee. I've seen every one of these nominees. Biden consistently has chosen hard left activists, political activists, brazenly. Uh, you, you know, one of, the, one of the nominees recently described himself as a wild-eyed left-wing activist. That was, those were his own terms. Uh, that nominee described the hatred he has for conservatives. That, that, that again, was his own terms. The, the nominees Joe Biden has put forth for the bench are more radical than any judicial nominees in our nation's history. They're far more radical than Obama's were. They're more radical than Clinton's were. They're more radical than Jimmy Carter's were. And, and the nominees that Biden is putting forward are nominees that he believes will undermine our rights, will undermine free speech, will undermine religious liberty, will undermine the Second Amendment. As you know, last year I wrote a book called One Vote Away how a single Supreme Court seat can change history. And in that book, One Vote Away, I go through in each chapter our fundamental rights, the rights we cherish, and how landmark case after landmark case was decided 5-4, that a single seat yeah. has the power to tip the balance and take away our rights. And sadly, that's what Joe Biden and the Democrats want. Yeah, well, that was very educational, that book. I want to ask you about this uh, balance of power, because the Democrats act like they have this enormous mandate and yet it's 50-50 Senate. And, and yet this last two weeks, uh, unfortunately, Democrat Senator uh, Ben Ray Lujan of New Mexico suffered a stroke. 
We wish him uh, the best. Uh, he's leaving his party one vote short of the majority, however. What does that mean for the SCOTUS vote if he literally cannot be there physically because of the stroke? Mm -hmm. Well, look, I, I certainly hope Ben Ray recovers and recovers quickly. Heidi's and my prayers are with him, and it's it's frightening. He was a young, healthy man, and, and yet any one of us, we don't know that, that we will be here tomorrow. Um, I, I do think the fact that, that he may be gone for some period of time, it illustrates the point you just made, which is how incredibly precarious this majority is, this 50-50 majority. It is the narrowest mathematical majority possible. If the Democrats actually paid attention to the voters, they would recognize that they don't have a mandate for a radical far-left socialist government. They don't have a mandate for, for adopting the policies of Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and AOC that a 50-50 Senate would call for some reasonableness and moderation. Unfortunately, that's not what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have done. They've gone hard, hard left, and they're behaving as if they have a 65-35 Senate. And Listen, if they nominate a zealot, I hope we see Republicans stand together and defend the rule of law and, and vote against confirming that zealot. If, on the other hand, they nominate a principled constitutionalist, I would be happy to vote for that judge. But I'll confess, based on the past year and the people Joe Biden's already put forward, I, I have very little optimism on that front. Senator, I've got to switch gears and talk about big tech censorship and your efforts to stop what's going on for the truckers. Uh, there has been censorship of their convoy in Canada, and also Facebook has removed their page for a D.C. rally. These truckers uh, raised money in a GoFundMe uh, situation, and the GoFundMe uh, officials said, well, you want to protest a vaccine? We're going to seize your $10 million that you raised. Can you imagine? People donate to GoFundMe because they are donating to a certain cause. GoFundMe thought nothing of saying we're going to seize the $10 million and give it to the charities that we want to give it to until they had to backtrack. What are you going to do about it? Yep. Well, listen, it, it, it is theft on the part of GoFundMe. Let me say the Canadian truckers are heroes. They are patriots, and they are marching for your freedom and for my freedom. They, they are those truck drivers that, God bless them, they're defending Canada, but they're defending America as well. That is, that is courage on display, that the government doesn't have the right to force you to comply to their arbitrary mandates. And they're standing up for freedom. And of course, big government hates it and is trying to crush them. Of course, the corporate media hates it and is trying to silence them. And big tech, you look at what GoFundMe did. People gave $10 million to support the Freedom Convoy because they were so proud of the courage of these truck drivers. And, and the thieves in Silicon Valley decided, we don't like your politics. So A, we're going to take your money. And then B, we're going to give it to people we like. Listen, if, if anyone else did that, that is called theft. And, and so today... Uh, I sent a letter to the Federal Trade Commission asking that the FTC open an investigation into GoFundMe into whether they've committed deceptive trade practices, because when people gave money, they gave money under the promise it would go to the Freedom Convoy, not to whatever left-wing political ideology GoFundMe and yeah. other Silicon Valley companies support. They are deceiving uh, consumers, and it is yep. wrong. Well, we'll be following this for sure. We will keep on that. Real quick, Senator, before you go on Ukraine, what is Putin trying to do here? Do you expect him to invade Ukraine? Look, I think Putin, it is likely he will invade within a month. His objective is to reassemble the old Soviet Union, which would be incredibly dangerous for the United States. And Maria, all of this is happening because Joe Biden has shown Putin weakness and appeasement. He gave away the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which I had authored the bipartisan sanctions that stopped yep. Nord Stream 2, that prevented a Ukraine invasion. And Joe Biden yep. capitulated. He has capitulated to enemies across the globe. He, he gave Afghanistan to all the right. Taliban. He's trying to give Ukraine to Russia. And he's on the way to giving Taiwan to the Chinese communists. Senator, thanks very much for all you're doing. We will see you soon. We appreciate it.